Hey there everybody. I am going to try to do this horizontal this time. So if you can tell me if this is, hey everybody, if you can tell me if this is actually right side up when I flip it around because uh, I don't know if I'm holding my phone the right direction. So let me give it a try. Uh, hi, I watched last week's Periscope and it was super shaky. Thank you. Thank you. It's Mariel. I almost said Marie. Hey, hi, everybody. Good to see you. So I'm attempting to periscope from my desk today. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to try to set it down because I realized last week that it was really shaky and I was doing it from a hotel room, so that might be part of it. But, um, oh, good. I'm glad I'm talking about it, too. I'm hope hopefully that's going to, okay. All right. Hey, I am so excited that you all are here, and hello, Argentina. Um, so tonight we're talking about students who rush through their work. Uh, I had a blog post. This I know I need to try. <laughs> I have an Android. It seems like everything is made for um, for iPhones, but um, yeah, we'll all figure it out. You know, if I had waited um, until I got Periscope down just right, I never would have done it. So each week there will be some improvements. I looked on my catch page. And, uh, you know, they're all standing upright, and I didn't love that. So um, I'm going to probably <laughs> experiment during this periscope with things on my desk that I can stick my phone on because I'm really looking down. Okay, so um, if this is your first time watching a periscope, then um, you'll see little hearts coming up on the side. That's what happens when people tap their screen. So if you've never done that before, it's just a way of giving love to the person who's given the periscope. So... If you wanted to do that, that would be grand. Um, thank you. So we are going to be talking tonight about students who rush through their work. I did a blog post um, last week about helping slow students, um, not slow learning students, but students who um, work slowly, helping them get done more quickly. And so um, when I posted that on my Facebook page, I got a few teachers that said, what about students who go too fast? How do we deal with that? And I thought, okay, that'd be perfect for this week's Periscope. So I am going to um, address that now. Uh, this time I have also created um, notes that I'm going to be following as I talk to you so that if you wanted to, um, you know, look at those later on or something, you could. Um, the way that you would find those would be to go to my website called uh, Cult of Pedagogy and then just put slash Periscope and you will go to this document that I actually had the camera on before and this is these are the notes I'm going to be going from so if you wanted some notes on this later on um, you can get them there okay so you have students who rush through their work I have one of those in my house he is eight years old and he he has a tendency to rush through his work and what I noticed in some of the research that I did this week was that this tends to happen a lot more with boys than with girls so not that it's exclusive to them but it tends to be, they just tend to not want to settle in and like be real super detail oriented, but they would rather just get it done so they can get back to moving around. So I would say before we talk about any uh, solutions to this problem, um, the first thing that you would want to do is make sure that the work that's being turned in is actually subpar for some reason. Yes, so we're having a lot of issues with the little boys wanting to, to be done quickly, which I can understand. So First, ascertain whether or not the work is actually subpar, because if you have a student who is advanced and not very challenged and they get the work and they're saying, this is boring, but I can just knock it out in a second, that is a different problem. That is not the problem we're addressing here. That is a student who's not challenged. So if you're having a problem with a student finishing too quickly because the work is too easy for them, that's a differentiation issue that is potentially a gifted issue, um, and so with that child, I don't believe you need to be stifling their desire to just get it over with. Um, I think with those kids, they need more challenging work. And we can talk about that on another Periscope. I've got a post um, on my site called a starter kit for differentiated instruction, which just sort of pulls together a lot of good resources on differentiation, books, videos, um, a couple of really good go-to strategies. So if differentiation is something that you are um, wanting to learn more about. I know that that's something that a lot of teachers really, really struggle with. So, okay. 
what we are talking about are the kids who just want to rush through their work and they make mistakes. They skip questions or it's really messy or um, they get stuff wrong that they should have gotten correct if they had just read their work more carefully. So here are the strategies that I have kind of pulled together from doing just some, some research with some people and online. Um, the first set of strategies for dealing this, with this is to create a calm, focused atmosphere in the classroom. And there are a few different ways to do this. One is to sort of tell everybody, for the next 20 minutes, we are all going to be working on X task. If you finish early, you need to move on to something else, but you're not going to be done early and then get to do something fun after that. Well. All work is fun, but <laughs> um, basically, do not make make sure you're not dangling some sort of privilege or fun thing um, in front of them as a reward for actually getting finished early. And I think sometimes teachers don't even realize that they're doing this. But if it's free time or if it's um, getting to do some other preferred activity then the kids are going to be motivated to finish early. Um, another part of creating that calm. Uh, environment is to not let the kids turn their papers in when they're finished and this one is kind of like a duh but I remember being a student and working and then having that one first kid get up and hand their work in, and then me all of a sudden thinking oh crap I've got to hurry because this person is done and I was pretty competitive as a kid anyway so um, I wanted to get my work done first and so um, Sorry, I'm trying to move something over because I still don't like the angle of my face. So vanity is taking over for just a second. Hang on, let's try that. Oh, better, okay. So instead of letting everybody turn their papers in when they're done, just say, when you're done, turn your paper upside down and you know, draw on the back of it or do something else, depending on how, how much variation there's gonna be in the different students' activities. So that one simple tweak, that could be the problem in your room. Maybe you're letting kids turn stuff in, so it's creating this whole rush and all this drama and all the other kids. Rah. So, okay, that. Um, also, it's interesting because this was a tip from the slow workers uh, post, but this is also a tip that I found online for the rushers too, is to provide an estimated time for the activity. To say, you know, what we're about to do now should take you between 10 and 15 minutes. If you find that after three minutes you're done, you have probably not done it correctly or you probably missed something. So go back, check, look over your work real carefully. And then that also helps your slower workers so that if they're on minute 13 or 14 and they're still not really quite done, they know um, I'm almost out of time. I probably need to speed things up a little bit. So all of these things can create a more calm, focused atmosphere. Um, I would say also part of that atmosphere is your own disposition. If you immediately start going to, to do something else, that's really gonna pull your attention away, like um, talking at the door with another teacher or, um, oh, I don't know, getting on your iPad and playing solitaire, or something where you're just completely like not paying attention to what they're doing. Um, the students who tend to wanna to get done early, they're gonna be like, well, she's not paying attention anyway. So yeah, cleaning out your desk. Well, yeah, you know what? I'm glad that you brought that up because if you're doing something that's very busy and active, that will distract the kids if they're supposed to be kind of working at something. So cleaning out your desk would definitely be something, and gosh, that's so tempting when they're all nice and quiet to just get a few more things tidied up. But if it's noisy, it's gonna get their attention. So um, I read this a post about, it was a family that was trying to help their son at home, and they suggested to the parents that they, during the son's homework time, that the parents actually sit nearby and do something calm and focused too, like reading a book or you know writing a letter or something that had an academic feel to it also, as opposed to doing something that's super you know busy and, and active, kind of creating the atmosphere with the whole group. Okay, so make sure that everything stays nice and calm. That's, that's an atmospheric um, approach to this problem. Another set of approaches Yes, reading with the students while they're reading. That really helps to set a tone and it shows them that it's important. The second batch of strategies for this is to put a premium in your classroom on quality over speed. And so 
that should just sort of be part of the discussion all the time. You did really quality work and here's why and here's what you did. Showing models of what uh, a finished assignment would look like that was done carefully and thoughtfully um, and show you could show them a model of one that looks like it was rushed so that they can see what quality work looks like. And you can even have the kids describe what are you seeing on this one versus what are you seeing on this one. Yours should look more like the quality example. So showing exemplar models, praising students for quality work. If a student turns work in, um, instead of saying, oh, you did that so quickly, it's sometimes if you've got a student who is normally a little bit slower and they get it done quickly, it may be tempting to just praise them for that. But if you're trying to encourage them to take their time with things and do, um, that's an excellent idea. Having posters on the wall to show quality work is great. If you're trying to get the students to take their time, then even hearing you compliment another student who's doing their work quickly, it can influence another student to rush. So just keep that out of it, unless it really is a timed type of a test. Um, and also avoid directly or indirectly rewarding students for finishing early. So again, the preferred activity, if everybody starts getting to do something fun after they finish early, that's an indirect reward, even if you didn't say, oh, you're gonna get this great, you know, great thing. If the students perceive that as a, as a reward, then they're going to be motivated to go as quickly as they can. And so that can have a, an adverse effect. Hang on one second. I have a dog who's fussing. Thomas, just a minute, okay? Just a minute. Um, this is the danger of me doing this out in the open. Um, okay, so if you've done all of these things and you still have kids who are fast finishers, here are a couple of other things that you can try. Um, if you've got a student who you definitely know tends to rush and mess up a lot, then just start making it, set it up with them to where they have to do about 10% of whatever it is. Have, if, it's a, if it's something that's got 20 math problems, for example, have them do three or four and then show them to you. And that way you can at least stop them midstream. If they are rushing, you can say, you don't have your columns lined up here or whatever the issue is, and at least you can correct them because having some, and this is what used to happen with our son, he would get all the way through his spelling homework and it would be a wreck and then we would ask him to redo it and he would flip out. So we started with him saying, just do the first two and bring it, bring it to us, let us check it, and then if it looks good, you can keep going. And sometimes I would even do that a second time and have him do you know a couple more, show it to me, and that way he's in the habit of, of that. Um, Go formative, yes, I've got a comment here. Thank you. Go formative is, is excellent because the way that app works, and this is if you've got a one-to-one -one classroom, correct? Is it really works best if everybody in the room has a device. But go formative is where the teacher gives an assignment and then on your own tablet or device, I think even it works on your computer screen, you can see little teeny mini versions of what every single kid is doing on their tablet. So it's really neat, especially if it's something that's really graphic. They're gonna have to draw something or graph something. You can see it and then you can immediately catch if somebody's not understanding it. So with these fast finishers, you can ha arrange with them ahead of time. You need to show. Now, I would not do that with all the kids, just the ones who are too fast. Um, also, you can work with the students to create a checklist of things that they need to make sure that they've done before they turn the paper in. So, and these are gonna vary depending on the assignment, but things like, did I put my name on my paper? If it's something that's in writing, did I uh, capitalize the word at the beginning of each sentence and put punctuation at the end of each sentence? Um, if it's a test where they're bubbling, did I complete a bubble for each question? Did I skip any? Um, and so, and I would say, you know, having the students help you create these, it'll build that self-efficacy to where they start to understand, I have to double check stuff before I finish it. I'm gonna have to end this probably early because I have a dog who obviously needs to poop or something. Okay, the one other suggestion I have, and I'm curious about your feelings about this one, is that you, if a student is habitually going too fast on things, that you send home a speeding ticket. And I just learned about this today, but I thought I would throw it out there to parents, basically saying, Jimmy is rushing through his work and um, we wanted to let you know that this is a problem. I don't know if there's some sort of a discipline consequence that goes along with this. Um, and so I could, see, I could see elementary teachers doing this with their students. Uh, I don't know if it's something that works with middle and secondary or you know, I think it's a good idea to communicate with parents if this is a habit. I know that I would definitely want to know if uh, my son was do had the same problem at school. And one of the things you may want to strat I just thought of this one, so it's not on the chart, but you may want to strategize with the parents. We had this issue when he was in second grade. 
um, he was bringing home work that was just really sloppy. And I thought, you know what? Your teacher may have accepted this because, you know, I know I accepted sloppy work as a teacher sometimes too. But I said, you know, if you bring something like this home again, I am going to contact her and ask me to send me home an extra blank sheet and we're going to have to have you redo it. And we did that a few times that year. Um, and he did not like it. <laughs> and it helped him slow down a little bit more. Um, and I tell you, the whole thing about rewarding students um, for speed, he told me that he rushed because if he hadn't, didn't finish it in time, that he would have to do it during recess. So in that case, it was a case of the teacher punishing them for not doing their work quickly. So Think about that, too, whether or not you're sort of, you know, rewarding kids for being fast or doing something to encourage them to rush through their work because there may be some sort of a consequence. And I'm guessing that probably what was happening is that they had 20 minutes to do something and he finished it in five just to make sure he wasn't going to have to do it during recess. So if that's the case and if you've got certain kids who are rushing, it may be worth it just to ask them, why are you going so fast? And it could be something that simple that they, they just want to make sure that they don't get whatever the consequence is for, for rushing for it. So that is everything I have for tonight. Um, thank you again for coming. I'm always like super thrilled when I open this, not finishing and then take home for homework. So this is, okay, that's the, the one that I did last time um, on slower workers. And so if you go to Cult of Pedagogy right now, it's like, either the most recent post or the one right before it. Um, I had a whole thing on, on what to do about slow workers. I think it's fine for them to take things home for homework unless they are chronically slow with everything. But occasionally, I think it's fine. But if a student is chronically slow, then you're probably dealing with a bigger issue that needs to be addressed in some other ways. Because sometimes you'll have these students who are bringing home like three hours of homework every night and they're, you know, 11, um, which I believe might be too much homework for an 11-year-old. So... Oh, what I was going to say, though, is I'm just always thrilled when I start a Periscope and there are actually people here. Thank you. Um, I will be doing this again next Tuesday night at 830. And if you are, are just joining me for the first time, thanks for the hearts. If you're just joining me for the first time, um, I've got recordings of all of these on a page called Catch. It's K-A-T-C-H dot M-E slash Cult of Pedagogy. And it's all of my um, recordings that are done already. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great night. I'm going to take my dog out to the yard and see what he needs to do. Thank you, guys. Ooh, that just flipped it around. That down. <laughs> a little bit more quality time together. Oh, Periscope. <laughs> I just keep touching the button and nothing happens. I may just have to close the <laughs> I may just have to close the app. This is the secret part of the periscope where you get to see how Jen handles stress. <laughs> it just doesn't matter how many times I hit it. <laughs> Twelve of you are still hanging in with me.